Hello, in this video we'll be covering the slowly changing dimensions transformation in Centerprise. The slowly changing dimensions transformation, or SCD for short, is a data transformation that allows the, you to update a dimension table uh, and not have to not violate any of the constraints that you typically have on dimension tables. For example, you would typically not uh, change data in a dimension table, you just keep adding records to it and uh, and s s designating uh, each new record that you add as the current record and then you just archive all the other records uh, for historical purposes. So Centerprise makes it easy to uh, update and insert new records depending on the strategy. Uh, typically you'll have uh, either an SCD1 or an SCT SCD2 uh, strategy that you'll employ. Uh, so for example, here on the left we have a product table, and this is the product table lives in our transaction database. So it has just one record for every single product in the table, in our inventory basically. Uh, and here's the product ID, which is our uh, which is our primary key for the table. But we also have the product number, which is also a unique identifier. Uh, we have one product number per product in the table. Um, so we can go ahead and change this uh, anytime we want. If we need to change the price, we'll just go into the table and we'll edit it. And we'll write a SQL statement and edit it. But for the dimen for the dimension table, we have a, a different uh, set of criteria. And if you know anything about dimension tables or data pre uh, data warehousing, uh, you can't uh, you can't just go ahead and write the uh, the change the values. Typically, you do not want to change these values. So anytime you want to make an update to this uh, table, you want to follow a very specific strategy when doing so. So, for example, if we look at the last uh, column here, we can see that the uh, we have a status column here and a couple of them for current. Uh, these are the these are the current records uh, as represented by the current state of whatever we have uh, well, since was last transferred from the original transactional uh, product table. The ones that do not have the current are are the ones that are uh, inactive or basically archived for historical uh, purposes. So to update that, we're going to use the uh, the slowly changing or the SCD component in Centerprise. Uh, the SCD component in Centerprise has uh, the layout of the table that we want to update. So, so of course, when the first thing we're going to have to do is, is open the properties uh, for the SCD component and select the, uh, the connection for the table. Uh, and this is the same connection screen you'll see on both the source and the destinations. Uh, the next screen is the, uh, is the pick tables uh, screen. And this is the table that you're going to want to update into, uh, most likely. You can, I mean, you can always uh, use this as a reporting tool, so you can, you don't have to update to a table. You can take this, the the results of the uh, directives, because in the end, that's what you're generating with the SCD component is directives to send to the database. But you can also use these directives to, uh, let's say, write all of the uh, what would be an insert or what would be an update to an uh, a, an Excel file for reporting purposes. But in this case, we're gonna we're gonna send this directive to our destination database table. So the first thing we need to do is pick which table we want to be able to update. And you would typically uh, pick the same table that you're gonna be uh, updating. Uh, and then we have the output options, which is single port and one port for each action. In this case, I'm gonna use single port, which just means that I'm going to generate a directive, which I'll pass on to the subsequent trans uh, destination. If I choose one port for each action, I will get a node uh, for for each action that is possible. The next screen is the uh, layout screen, but in this screen, which looks typical like a typical database layout screen, including your data types and your DB data types, we have three additional columns in dealing with with SCD. Uh, so you'll notice that most of them are not are marked as not used, not used, not used, which means that they are not really to be used in the case of, uh, of updating the, a record, or they're not used in the SCD strategy, uh, more, more like it. Um, so for example, um, you in, in this case we'll have a product key and the product alternate key being the surrogate and business keys. Uh, what this means is that the what we saw as the product number in the, in the original product table we are saying that that is the business key. That is the uh, thing that identifies a product. So that, that there is only one 
um, key per product and logically even though that in this database we might have that product repeated uh, several times but uh, it's, re it's, it's repeated for historical purposes but it's all referring to the same product which is represented by the business key so typically what you'll have is the business key being mapped from your transaction table to your uh, your basically your product your, your, your the key that's not the primary key for this table uh, this is the key that will be repeated multiple times. That's why you'll see here in this case it's the product alternate key, uh, but we Centerprise refers to it as the business key. The primary key for this table is the surrogate key. It is the key that, that identifies each record as a unique record in this table. So you want to keep, uh, you want to get uh, get these terms uh, down before you start map using the SED component. So uh, so of course usually the, the business key always has to be mapped and the surrogate key usually is not mapped. Um, and then we have the update not allowed uh, uh, drop uh, value from this drop down and that just means that this is protection for if you absolutely cannot have a value be updated. So in this case we've designated this product subcategory key that cannot be changed at all ever uh, whenever we're making updates to this uh, dimension table. So in order to do that, we'll just say update not allowed. And if we do get uh, a value that was changed in our source table from the destination table, it'll flag this record in error and it will not make an update to the table. Um, and then we have the, uh, in this case, we have another value in this dropdown called the SCD1 update. And this just means that we are going to update the record as if we were doing a regular old update. Uh, so some fields uh, in a dimension table you don't mind that if they change uh, even if you're going back in history and changing it. So for example I want to change the product name um, uh, I can go ahead and do that and update that no problem. So I'm going to consider that an SCD1 style update and whenever we encounter the way it works is that whenever we encountered a record from the source uh, that's mapped to it that has a different value than this than the whatever is in this column uh, it'll go ahead and trigger an SED1 uh, update and it'll generate an update statement. Uh, and that's in contrast to the one down here which is the SC, SCD2 updates uh, and insert strategy. So for list price we are not allowed to go back and change uh, history and we cannot change uh, records that have already been committed to this table and change the list price. What we have to do is we have to update the old record and say okay you are now the old record and then insert a new record with the new value. And uh, this happens automatically just by choosing the SCD, SCD2 update and insert uh, strategy and whenever there's a change in the list price coming from the source table. Uh, and then lat then s almost towards the end here we have the uh, dimension or the SCD strategy columns. Uh, and typically you'll have one or the other in this case, sometimes you might have all three. Uh, but uh, let's start with the status here at the bottom. The status indicates that this is the current record. So typically you would have only one record uh, be the current record uh, in, in the lineage of, uh, of rights to, uh, to records, uh, in, in this case the product records in the table. So we might have updated uh, a single product in this table five times. Four of them will have this value as null and one, only one of them should have the current designator. Uh, so whenever, so this comes in handy, of course, if you've ever worked with dimension tables when you're doing queries, you need you need to get that, that the the most current record in order to uh, join that with other uh, tables uh, and get the correct values. So um, in this case, we have uh, whenever you have the current de uh, record designator, you'll also have the active value uh, that you'll have to type in. In this case, we've we're we're designated the active uh, record with the current uh, value for the status column. Uh, in some database uh, dimension tables you might have uh, an in inactive value as well or you might have inactive or deleted or old or archived or something. So you, Centerprise also allows for you to specify inactive uh, values as well. The uh, SCD2 effective date and expiration date these are the values and, and a lot of times when you're not using a current uh, record designator you'll have something that say okay this record was good from this date to that date 
So the way it works is that if uh, you insert a record or insert a new record, it'll go back to the old record and uh, and and cl basically set the expiration date of when this operation happened. And every time you create a new record, it'll set the effective date. So if, so effectively, every current record will have its effective date set, but no expiration date. All the old records will have uh, an, uh, an effective date and an expiration date, effectively creating a, a date range. The other, um, the other uh, columns here you'll see are for uh, the audit uh, information. So anytime we make a change, so for example, um, uh, you need to you need to mark anytime an SCD change happened. Uh, you can create you can set this and it'll record that time. Likewise for SCD two changes uh, or any just last changed uh, or when it was created in general. Uh, these are very useful when you need to keep uh, a very strict uh, control over who made changes to what and when. Uh, and lastly we have uh, version number uh, which is uh, just uh, which is a, has, serves the same purpose as the current record designator it's just that it'll keep incrementing that version number uh, whenever it inserts a new record. Uh, in, this, in this example we, we are not making use of a version column or any of the audit uh, columns for SCD purposes. So if I were to now preview this data uh, from the component here, let's preview it. You can see that I have the object path being SCD and all of the uh, data coming from my transaction table. And at the end here, you'll see I have uh, the database write strategy. So in this case, you can see that I have an update for the record and if I scroll over here, uh, I think it's because I set the, if I, let me look at which actually column I set to uh, the SCD, the English product name. So in this case the English product, product name has changed so therefore it is generating an SCD1 update and it's only insert, it's only updating that, that one record. Uh, and uh, as opposed to uh, this, set, this next set of records here you can see that for the next two records we have uh, we have um, we have two identical products uh, being inserted into the dimension table. So what's happening is, is an, this is an SCD2 update that's occurring at this point. So you can see that this is the same record. The first thing we're doing is we are updating. Oops, scroll back up there. The first thing we're doing is updating, and then followed. Uh, by an insert and here you can see that we are setting the current uh, uh, record designator in the status column. Uh, we are updating the old record and removing that uh, current status column in addition to setting the end date. So now we have a, a, a date range when this record was effective from start to finish uh, and this record should no longer be changed. So the next time we run an update it, this record will not be changed at all. It'll go to the current record and then uh, update its status before it inserts a new record. So that's that. This is how the SCD uh, works. The, so depending on which SCD strategy you are, uh, which is occurring, uh, you'll either get uh, one record coming out of it or two records coming out of it. And of course, anything that's not doesn't need to be uh, updated will be set to uh, skipped identical. And then here we have some uh, ones that are er erroneous and I think it's because we are trying to change something in the record here. And yeah, so we're trying to change the product subcategory from what it was in the original um, in the original dimension table. So anytime we do that, it's going to go ahead and give us an error. So um, now that we've done that, uh, the last option I wanted to show is the, okay, right now we're relying on the uh, database write strategy. So that's why you only see uh, the input and the output directly. Uh, well, just like with all of the other database uh, write strategies, we can also change it to one port for each action, and which po at which point you get the uh, you get the output ports. Uh, and I can take, let's say, for example, I only want to uh, insert records into my table. I do not want to update anything ever. And so if I if I want to do that, I can make use of each of these uh, each of these 
output ports and do something different with each of them. Uh, for example, I want to send one to the database table, one to uh, an output file, or I want to control the uh, different mappings for the different uh, operations that I'm doing. Say, for example, I want to insert everything or I want to update everything and only insert a few things. I can do that uh, with these insert and update uh, things as well. So here you can see where <coughs> I've changed the, ex the, the destination database layout so I can do some sort of different mapping depending on if it's an insert uh, or if it's an update. And you'll notice that when I do this, and of course I think I forgot to map the product key, or the, in this case the product number to my business key, which is the product alternate key. So let me just go ahead and map that. And now I should be able to preview this data. So, so here you see that the preview has changed quite a bit. So now I have uh, a tree, a hierarchical preview, and here you can see that I had that first record just being an update, and the second record uh, being an update, and I think if I go down here you can see here that the next one is an insert. Um, so so depending on how you set your uh, output uh, properties, in this case I have one input and, and multiple outputs, your preview will change uh, depending on that. Um, and uh, pretty much that's how you use the uh, slowly changing dimension transformation in Centerprise. Thank you very much.